Hey Bowtie Nation, Joseph Hogue here with what could be one of the most important investing videos you watch, not just for beginner investors, because I see a lot of stock portfolios out there that have missed this one critical component. This video is gonna be the first in a series, how to invest for beginners to intermediate and advanced, helping you build a complete portfolio that will reach your goals. We'll start today with the core of every investor's portfolio, the stocks and funds that are gonna fix the biggest mistakes investors make. Now be sure to join the community by tapping that subscribe button so you don't miss a single episode, including the next two in the series on how to complete your portfolio with strategies and stocks for max returns. This first video is the most important though, not just because it sets that essential base for your portfolio, but because so many investors have missed this step. The last four years have been a stock picker's market, with investors flitting from one hot stock to the next like a honeybee on crack. And you don't need me to tell you the problem with that. Besides the hours every week spent looking for that next hot stock to buy, hours spent researching that you could have been drinking and watching Twilight Zone, but also the massive losses on those hot stocks that turn out to be about as cold as the last slice of pizza at a Weight Watchers meeting. So for those of you just starting investing, I'm gonna reveal how to get started the right way. For the old timers like myself, we'll take a step back and make sure our portfolios are right for our goals. That's why I'm gonna get started with a group of ETFs, funds that are gonna be your set it and forget it portfolio. That's important because the average investor is his own worst enemy. All the trading, the buying and selling, the searching for the next hot stock caused the average investor to earn just 2.9% a year in the last 20 years. That's less than half the 7.5% annual return on stocks in the S&P 500 index, and even below the 4.8% return on a bond portfolio. It is not that you can't pick stocks and be successful. I'm gonna show you how to do just that in our next video, but holding this group of stock funds, the ETS, is gonna do two very important things for your money. First, it's gonna guarantee you get that market return. You won't have to watch the market go up while your stocks go down, as so often happens. You'll benefit from that bull market and you will make money. Also though, and this is something even experienced investors miss, is having half or more of your money in these set it and forget it funds is gonna free up your time immensely. Instead of trying to be a full-time stock picker on top of your full-time job, you can enjoy your time, spend it with family and friends, and, and still know that your money is working for you. And that all has to start with an index ETF, a fund like the Invesco QQQ Trust that holds the 100 largest non-financial companies listed on the NASDAQ. And here you might be wondering why I'm going with the QQQ instead of maybe the SPY ETF, that, that fund that tracks the S&P 500, which is usually what we think of as the stock market. But why? When the NASDAQ stocks beat the broader market in nearly every period. One year QQQ up 36% versus 25% for the S&P. A five year here with the NASDAQ up 138% versus just 80% for the S&P 500. And even the 10 year chart here with the NASDAQ up over 400%, more than double the 177% return on stocks in the S&P 500 index. Now, there is a lot of overlap between those two stock market indexes. A lot, I mean, with Microsoft, Apple, Nvidia, all the giant US companies here. But the kicker here for the QQQ is it's even higher percentage in tech stocks, nearly 59% of the index, which is gonna give it that growth we see in these returns. Overall, the NASDAQ QQQ ETF is just a core fund for getting just enough diversification across the market index, but still with that growth focus that you want for higher returns. As part of our core portfolio, which I'm gonna explain how to do this later, you might invest as much as 150 or even $200 of that first thousand or 20% of your ongoing investment. I'll reveal my favorite growth ETF to buy next, but maybe before answering which funds to buy, you need to know where to invest, which investing platforms to use. And this is actually one of the easiest choices you'll make because honestly, most investing platforms are basically the same. I use four different platforms for research, free offers, and other features, and I've used more than a dozen others to test them out, but which you use really comes down to three simple factors. Now we know that Robinhood started that race to no cost investing, but now most online brokers are gonna let you buy and sell stocks with no commissions and, and low option fees. I use E-Trade and Robinhood, but Vanguard and Fidelity are also good choices for this kind of low cost investing. Just make sure whichever you choose, you can buy and sell stocks and ETFs with no fee or commission. Now, this one might not matter as much for beginner investors, but when you start investing in individual stocks, you're gonna want the free research that comes with some of these sites. I get tip ranks, analyst targets, and Morgan Stanley research reports with E-Trade and have an account on Merrill Lynch for research as well. But again, it might not be quite as important for you if you just want the set it and forget it investing style. Finally here, using a website that lets you buy fractional shares is a must. I use Robinhood and SoFi, but M1 Finance is also a good choice here. 
These brokers are going to let you invest any amount into a stock, no matter what the share price is. You won't have to save up that $900 before you can buy a single share of NVIDIA. With these platforms, you can invest $50 and get that fraction of a share. Now, there is nothing wrong with trying out a few of these different investing sites. Most are going to let you open an account without a deposit, and some will even give you free stock or a cash back. Look for the link to Robinhood in the video description below and get a free share of stock while you try it out. This next fund, the First Trust Cybersecurity ETF, ticker CIBR, gives me exposure to one of my favorite long-term themes. Cybercrime costs have jumped fourfold over the last three years and are expected to double again through 2027. And with the rise of artificial intelligence and how much reliance we'll be putting on software, cybersecurity needs could still be underestimated. That alone has lifted cybersecurity budgets to over 10% of overall tech budgets from just 8.6% three years ago. According to Palo Alto Networks, the market has grown by double digits to $213 billion in the last five years, evolving along with these new threats. And that market may double again in the next five years as demand evolves again to meet the connected and AI-driven worlds. The 32 companies held in the fund are all big names in cybersecurity, with a median market size over $10 billion. You've got pure play names like CrowdStrike, Palo Alto Networks, and Zscaler, along with broader net names like Broadcom and Cisco. And now an important note here, you're going to notice with this and the next ETF that there's a very strong growth focus to this portfolio. So if you've got less than 10 years to retirement, you might want more dividend funds for that cash flow. Here, though, I'm talking to anyone under the age of 50. You need this growth focus, catching these major trends in technology and cybersecurity to grow your money faster. Of that first $1,000 invested, you might put $100 or around 10% of your ongoing monthly investments into this cybersecurity fund. We still got three critical ETFs to highlight, but all this is going to be pointless if you don't start with an investing plan right for you. It's why I created this quick three-step guide to making your investing plan. Within five minutes, you'll be able to create an investing plan that makes your goals the motivation to keep investing and that is customized to your needs. I'll leave a link below in the description. It's totally free, just something I wanted to do for all you out there in the community. So click through, get your step-by-step -step guide now. I've seen too many investors miss out on the opportunity to make their money work for them, and it was because they didn't have a plan that fit their needs. So look for that link and get your free customized plan. And okay, I promise this is our last growth tech ETF with the iShares Expanded Tech Sector ETF, ticker IGM, a fund of 278 large companies in hardware, software, internet, all the things driving change and the markets. Now this one is going to look very similar to the QQQ, that NASDAQ ETF that we already talked about with all the biggest tech companies like Apple, Microsoft, and NVIDIA, but it does have some tech companies not in the QQQ and what it doesn't have are those non-tech stocks like Costco and Pepsi. And while the IGM has beaten that NASDAQ ETF in the one year and other periods, there are other periods like we see in this five-year chart where the fund returns are basically the same. So this is really going to be a judgment call on your part. I like adding the expanded tech ETF even with the QQQ because I want that portfolio overweighted in tech. Because let's face it, folks, technology is driving the world and will continue to produce those kinds of returns that you just aren't going to get with the safer sectors like consumer staples or healthcare. But here, if you do want a different focus, maybe on income or dividends, you could sub this one out for another ETF you like, or just use this instead of the QQQ. Adding it in, you might use $75 of that initial $1,000 portfolio, or about 7% of your ongoing investment. It's not much, but you've already got a lot of those tech stocks, so you're just juicing that growth a little more each month. Now, it can't all be about growth, though, so I'm adding value and cash flow with the Real Estate Sector Fund, ticker XLRE. This is an ETF holding 31 real estate investment trusts, those REITs in the S&P 500 index, so the largest real estate companies here, and paying a 3.7% dividend yield. Now, no other sector has been hit as hard on high interest rates as real estate, with the group up just 4% over the past five years, trailing every other sector in stocks. But here, investors just seem to forget that even after the 2008 crash, Real estate was one of the best investments in five of the next six years. Nation, there is no better inflation hedge than real estate, and as interest rates come down over the next few years, these real estate stocks could produce strong returns on top of that dividend yield. And these are some of the largest, most stable real estate stocks like American Tower, Realty Income, and Digital Realty, spread across property types and geographic regions. It's one of my favorite ETFs for that value and cash flow, and I'd put up to $100 or $150 of that initial $1,000 portfolio 
or as much as 10% of an ongoing investment. I'm going to reveal an ETF that fixes the biggest problem in the market next, but I want to give you an investing plan to go with this portfolio. How to invest that $1,000 in a portfolio of stocks and funds to create your financial future. And first, Nation, you do not have to start with $1,000 or even $100. The most important part of investing is to just get started. Stop waiting for all your debt to be paid off. Stop waiting for that big birthday check from grandma. Just get started. Whether you do start with $1,000 or $100 or whatever you start with, we're going to be using what's called the core satellite strategy. Using the core satellite strategy means investing 50 to 65% of your money across index funds and ETFs like these in this video. It means you'll always earn that no worries stock market return along with cash flows and growth that we're talking about with these funds. That is going to be the core of your portfolio. Between 500 to 650 of that initial thousand dollars spread across three to five ETFs. Then with the remaining 35 or 45 percent of your money, the four four hundred and fifty dollars of that thousand dollars, you invest those in individual stocks that you really like. The ones I'm going to show you how to find in our next video. So here you still get the chance to pick stocks that are going to boost your portfolio, but the fact that it's only about a third of your money does some amazing things. First, with maybe three or five percent of your money in each individual stock, it means you're only investing in maybe 10 or 15 stocks total. That means you're not constantly chasing the next hot stock, spending hours of research on each. You find that handful of stocks that you really believe in and don't have to watch some Yahoo in a bow tie help you find more every single week. Also, because you've only got three or five percent of your money in each individual stock and, and much of your portfolio in those broad index funds, you don't have to worry about any one stock destroying your future. You're not losing sleep when that one stock crashes and takes your dreams with it because you know you're still getting the market returns from that core index fund part portion of your portfolio and growth in these other stocks. Once you get started with the core satellite strategy, just invest a little each month, whatever you can afford to invest while still enjoying life. This next fund fixes the biggest problem in the market right now with the Invesco S&P Equal Weight ETF, the RSP. You see, after a runaway year that saw the seven largest stocks in the S&P 500 up almost 80% versus just 12% for the other 493 stocks on average, that broad market index is basically just a focused fund of the Magnificent Seven. Those largest seven stocks are also getting very expensive, priced at over 33 times on a price to earnings basis, a nosebleed height of expensive versus the 21 times PE average for the rest of the stocks in the market index. And while I do want some of that tech growth focus like we're getting with these other funds, if we're investing in a fund for its broad market wide safety, then that's what we should get. Now, instead of weighting each stock by its company size, the RSP holds an equal amount in each stock in the S&P 500, spreading that exposure out evenly across the index. So you keep that index exposure to the largest U.S. companies, but across all of them. Now, an interesting point here, the fund tilts your exposure towards the smaller companies since they have a higher weight here than in the regular S&P 500 index. But even the smallest company, Fox Corporation, is still a $13.8 billion giant. So this is still a large cap fund. Here, if you put $150 of that initial $1,000 investment or about 15% of your ongoing investing, that smooths out your portfolio a little with these safer sectors while not taking too much of that focus away from the growth and tech stocks. Now you'll notice that's just $625 of our initial $1,000 starter portfolio. For the remainder, you can fill in these with other ETFs. For example, if you want more dividend funds, you might go with the Schwab US Dividend ETF, the SCHD with its 3.5% yield. Putting all your money in ETFs means never having to worry about a single stock wrecking your portfolio returns, but it also means being satisfied with the market return and no more. For those of you that want a higher return, I'm going to show you how to fill in your portfolio with individual stocks in our next video to get you started investing. Make sure your portfolio is right for your goals with the customized investing plan and the link in the video description below, or click on the video to the right for the one index fund every investor needs to buy. Don't forget to join the Let's Talk Money community by tapping that subscribe button and clicking the bell notification.